Hello everyone, it is June 18th, 2010, and this is Global Government News. I am Darko. We'll be covering the events in Kyrgyzstan, or Kyrgyzstan, and um, actually we're just going to cover this wishbone salad dressing. That's what I made this video for. We're going to cover Tyler's recipes. No, no, just joking. Um, but yeah, so we're going to cover the events in Central Asia, and this is going to be a three-part, four-part series on uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan, and I'm going to go into the history of uh, something called the Great Game, find out uh, what all this ethnic tensions uh, are, why they have ethnic tensions, and... Um, you can get a little uh, general idea of what Central Asia is because if you're like me, uh, you probably don't have too much of a clue about the area. Um, but I like giving history on uh, on stuff like this, like I did with the Somali Pirates, because I think it's good for everybody. It's good for me because I get to learn about a country. I get to learn about how they came to be such a, not shithole, but, you know, Basically, you find out it's always the same countries, whether it's Russia, China, or UK, slash US. They're always involved with countries that are uh, under civil unrest or political unrest or economic turmoil and always have these, quote, color revolutions. You always find the same, uh, you, you always find the usual suspects, which are those countries. And they're always trying to vow and dominate uh, these little countries. And... These countries usually have puppet, puppet uh, uh, presidents and dick or dictators, and they're puppet countries. They're puppet presidents, and uh, they're always being uh, uh, kind of like a tug of war between these countries, especially mostly the Russians and the Anglo-Saxons, the West. And uh, they actually called it the Great Game. And so, uh, like I said, we're going to learn more and more about this, but uh, so we can figure out why 400,000 people uprooted in Kyrgyzstan and uh, the civil unrest that's taking place there. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's get some uh, brief, updated uh, stuff on what's going on right now in Central Asia and uh, the latest stories. Uh, this Time News article, which was uh, posted today. Um, uh, basically a, a kind of a lowdown. says so UN humanitarian office says the number of people uprooted by unrest in Kyrgyzstan has reached 400,000. Spokeswoman uh, Elizabeth Bars said estimated number of people driven from their homes but still inside Kyrgyzstan is 300,000. She says there are now about 100,000 refugees in neighboring Uzbekistan. The last official estimate of refugees who fled the country was 75,000. No number or internally displaced has been available. Finishing up this paragraph says thousands of ethnic Uzbeks remain fearful of returning to their homes from border areas and are waiting their chance to leave the country for camps on the Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan side. And then we look at the map here and you see there's Kyrgyzstan. And then uh, here's uh, Bishkek. And then there's Uzbekistan. And... Um, you see this little wedge? It's kind of like a wedge right there in western Kyrgyzstan. And this is where Ash is. And this is where this area right here. And then the south. And then there's the north. And currently, um, well not currently, but the last president, um, Bakayev, whatever, uh, he was from this area. And uh, most of the people around here are Uzbekistani. And... Uh, like I said, if you look at here, you can see that uh, there's a wedge that's right through Kyrgyzstan. If you were to close this off, you know, and you just made it Kyrgyzstan, maybe that would solve the problems. But it, it's not that simple. And most of the commerce goes on in between northern Afghanistan and all these border countries and China. and So you got all the commerce going on right around here. But, uh, and uh, if you look at another uh, time article and of course time is pro anglo-saxon establishment western uh, power establishment and um, 
so it's going to be a little different of a of a uh, of a story here. But you know, like I said, I'm going to show. I'm going to get into the other history of it. But let's look at the uh, let's look at the mainstream media slash propaganda uh, history of Kurdistan. And they say the bloody protests that erupted this week in Kyrgyzstan was leading to scores of deaths and injuring hundreds thus far, paralyzed a small Central Asian country of 5 million people, and likely toppled its ruling government. It says, according to some reports, Kyrgyz's uh, President uh, Bakiev fled the capital, uh, Bishkek, on Wednesday to su rally support in his home region of Jalalabad. Uh, Bakiev, who came into office in 2005, as a champion of democracy and reform, has been accused of corruption and rigging elections last year, which is no surprise, right? Same here th in, in the States and everywhere else. Foreign observers also see the hand of the Rus uh, Russia in recent events with Moscow eager to reassert its traditional influence over a Soviet republic that uh, happens to house a key U.S. air base. But let's check out a video from Al Jazeera on the recent events. On board the Kyrgyz presidential airplane. For the country's interim leader, this will prove the most quiet part of the day. On Rosa Otenbayava's first trip south to the areas most ravaged by ethnic fighting, we asked her what she wanted to accomplish and why she was only heading there after more than a week of deadly violence. Uh, my objective to go there to see uh, with my own eyes uh, what's happened, what is the uh, scale of uh, tragedy and uh, what uh, we should do and how we should do On the ground in Osh, the country's second largest city, we visit this hospital where the president hears from ethnic Uzbeks targeted by their fellow countrymen. I never thought this war could happen. I went to the airport. They stopped me, beat me, and then stabbed me four times. We tour Osh in neighboring Jalalabad, but only by helicopter. Her security detail insists it's just too dangerous. We pass countless city blocks, evidence of the violence is everywhere, and seems to support the United Nations claim that more than 400,000 have been displaced. In a packed town hall in Osh's administrative building, Oten Bayava faces her critics. This man said the town's representatives had been trying to reach her office for days, but couldn't get past her staff. <laughs> Outside, determined residents gather in the main square. The crowd starts to demand answers, and Otenbayeva comes out to listen. For almost an hour under the sun, the complaints and passions only keep rising. The presidential entourage evacuates. Left behind are the armed militias, Kyrgyz men who traveled here from all reaches of the country. If there were commanders who were involved, or police, local officials who were involved in killing ethnic Uzbeks, what action would you take? Oh, straight. Uh take him under arrest and investigate and uh, bring to the justice. But those are distant thoughts for a country still on the brink. Clayton Swisher, Al Jazeera, Southern Kyrgyzstan. And so there you go, folks. Uh, please join me in the next part of this series. Uh, you just saw the interim president there of uh, Kyrgyzstan. And what is she going to do? She's not going to do anything. She's a puppet. And who does she work for? She works for the West, the Western globalist, right? They all work together towards a world government. They just have different, different ways of going about it. You can either go with the Leninism, Leninist style of communism or socialism, or you can go with the Fabianism, the Fabianist style of socialism, communism. So that's what it's all about. It's about the, the big powers, the big boys, and uh, their control mechanisms. And, what, and it's just that's all it's about. So, and she represents the West. So it's just a changing of the guard. Please join me again on the next video. Thank you.